What's up, gangsters? So, um, let's get uncomfortable with some uh, disturbing, disgusting, depraved, and depressing shit. Or, as I'd like to call it, uh, the four Ds of Dora. Mario and Dora. And, in case you're asking yourself, cool, but, um, what's a Mario and Dora? Well, it's an uh, alias used by this uh, controversial German filmmaker, probably best known for his magnum opus, Melancholy Den Engel, which started to uh, top most disturbing movies list ever since people found out about it back in uh, the early 2010s. I mean, uh, I did my part by uh, talking about it during my series. Mm. So, what I want to do in this video is, you know, just go through his five uh, feature-length films and see if uh, by doing so we can um, find out a little bit more about this uh, mysterious man. We'll be going through his movies uh, chronologically, which means we're going to start with Tapris Documentar. Even though it's listed as a uh, 2012 release on both IMDb and uh, Letterboxd, it was actually made back in uh, 2003. It indeed just wasn't released until uh, 2012. And um, why is that, you might ask? Well, um, let's take a look at the movie and uh, see, if, uh, see if we can find out. Ah, Debris Documentar. A little heads up, this movie is fucking disgusting. And what's this? Einblicke in die Vorproduktion von Melancholy der Engel? Okay, well, uh, let's let's keep that in mind. Well, I do recognize this guy. It's Carsten Frank, who also appeared in Melancholy. Here we see him running around naked, recording some animal cadavers in the first few seconds of the movie. So, um, up to a good start, I'd say. When he's not doing that, he's working on a film set. And look at that, for none less than Uli Lommel of The Boogeyman fame. And Daniel Der Zauberer in fame me. Why is David S there? Not sure exactly what our main character does here on this set. As the copy I own, well, it does have Dutch subtitles, but they're the worst. <laughs> What was that timing? Anyway, so when he's not working on this film set, he is doing some nasty shit. And really, I could easily fill a whole video just describing all the nasty shit he does, but to spare you all of that, basically it goes from smelling shoes and eating whatever he finds in between his toes, all the way to being anally fisted while indulging himself in the fresh aromas of an enema induced bowel movement. <laughs> and really everything in between. Like I, I wasn't joking when I said that this movie is really disgusting. And well, to each his own, I guess. But this guy, Carsten Frank, he, he must really be into this type of shit, pun intended, as I'm pretty sure all of this is real, and we as an audience get to see all of it. Yay. So, and when he's not doing all of that shit, he's looking for an actor for his artsy project. A made on Cody that angle type of project, perhaps? And, I, I don't know, I, I guess there's a plot somewhere in all of that mess, but there probably isn't. So, yeah, Debris Documentar. It looks kind of nice. And, well, get used to that, because this is that signature Dora style. Shot on digital video, which I personally don't care for, but I do appreciate the whole glossy, glowy, you know, like soft focus look, with desaturated yellow-greenish tints, and a nice vignette to top it all off. Really, you're gonna see this exact look in all of his movies, which uh, I guess is kind of memorable. The movie itself, however, uh, probably not so much. <laughs> it's definitely not for everybody. I, I wonder if it's even for anybody, you know, besides perhaps the director and his main actor. I mean, uh, I see this as, as like borderline transgressive performance art shot on video, because, well, that's, that's kind of what it feels like. And, you know, maybe it does all mean something, you know, like finding beauty in the darkest depths of depravity, the uh, three Ds of Dora. But really, the only potential metaphor that I could see was when we get to see the, the main character, you know, who's trying to make a film, jerking off to his own film project. Because that, you know, that somewhat would make sense. Since, from what I understand, this movie is, is somewhat autobiographical, in the sense that, you know, the main character, he's, he's working on, on a film set and struggling to get his own film made. Just like Mario Dora, perhaps. 
Because if you remember from the beginning, um, Dora made this movie while he was stuck on pre-production for uh, Melancholy Der Engel. As well as that apparently it's biographical, in the sense that he just followed around Carlsten Frank doing what he does. Which I guess means that, you know, the stuff that we see him doing in the movie is just what he does. I mean, um, weird guy. Mm. Anyway, it's church bells. Not what I was going to say, though. Um, yeah. Great introduction to uh, Mario Andorra, this movie. By the way, it's it's not his real name. N nobody knows his real name. N nobody even knows what he looks like. As, you know, he, he wishes to remain anonymous with his uh, filmmaking work. Which, after just seeing this first movie, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's somewhat understandable. So yeah, that's uh, David's Documentar. On to the next movie, Cannibal. Which I've also already talked about before during my uh, Disturbing Movies series. However, that was around the time that my videos were uh, super cringy, so um, let's try again. <laughs> Based on the actual case of Armin Maives, who found a willing volunteer to be cannibalized, this movie basically just tells exactly that story, and from what I understand, pretty closely so. He's portrayed by, hey, Carlsten Frank again, and when he's not hanging out with random children or watching, what, snuff and, and butcher videos, he spends his day writing messages in Microsoft Word, and from there I guess he copies it to a message board looking for somebody willing to be eaten. Ah, what a life. But he eventually finds his perfect match, he is, ah, he's so happy. But their encounter is a little awkward, as first dates tend to be. <laughs> I mean, what would you say when you meet someone for the first time under these circumstances? I'm your flesh. Uh, I'm, I, gu I guess that's a, a pretty good icebreaker. The acting is pretty terrible in this movie, by the way. Are you certain you want to go ahead with this? As it is in most of his movies. But all goes well and <laughs> after this, uh, this, this super silly romantic montage and a bunch of sex scenes with horse sound effects for whatever reason, we eventually get to the cannibal act. Well, the first time it's a, it's a bit of an epic fail since... You're too weak. Nice dubbing. But a little alcohol always helps to loosen up, so the second time around they go all the way. In a very explicit detail. Yeah, besides the visual look, which you should start to recognize by now, another theme in Indora's movies is that the camera doesn't shy away from anything. Yep, that's uh, that's the face of regret if I've ever seen one. It's like, did I just eat my own penis? And <laughs> keep in mind that, well, for all of these movies, I'll probably not show the most gruesome stuff, you know, just to be safe. So they're all, you know, like all these movies, they're likely even worse than I make them seem to be. Anyway, he then moves the body, which, you know, it kind of looks like uh, trying to get your drunk friend home after a party. And then we spend the last 20 or so minutes with him preparing the body for a nice dinner. Cheers. So, I'm, I'm still not quite sure how to feel about this one. I guess my biggest problem is the, the pacing. It's, it's so slow. Not an awful lot happens, but they still manage to stretch all of this out to 90 minutes. So, yeah, sometimes it's a... Uh, it's quite boring, even though visually there's enough going on. And, well, I'll, I'll have to give Dora props here, because he usually does a lot of work on his own movies. And this one is apparently shot within one week on a 2,000 euro budget. I mean, gotta respect that. But besides that, um, well, it's the story of one person meeting up with another to be eaten in its full gory detail. Not really sure what else is there to say. So, yeah, that was uh, Cannibal. As you've probably heard, you know, in case you were listening, I've watched the uh, the English dub version of the movie. Apparently there's a German version as well, but I've never seen it. Unearthed Films put this movie out on DVD in the US, and apparently that one does have both audio tracks, but that one also goes for ridiculous prices. I got my Dutch release for relatively cheap, but, you know, that one comes with just the, uh, the English audio. Anyway, it's not super important. So um, let's just move on to the next movie because um, ah, this is uh, probably the one he'll be remembered for. Melancholy der Engel or The Angel's Melancholy. 
or the angel's melancholia. Either way, whatever title, let's just jump into it. And before we jump into it, um, when I first covered this movie on my channel back in uh, 2012, in my most watched video, huh, how about that? Ah, those were the days, right? Um, I, I kept complaining, or you know, at least I, I brought it up a couple of times, that I had no idea what was really going on in the movie. Since, you know, the, 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 the only copy I had at the time, it only came with no subtitles. And, you know, since it's German and my German is nicht so sehr gut, I didn't really know what was going on. Ever since I got a, another copy that does come with English subtitles, and I, I still don't have any idea what the hell is going on in this movie. Basically, what we have here is a two and a half hour plus descent into depravity as we follow two friends, one of them Carlson Frank, once again, who bring along a few other people to this house where shit goes down. There's this this constant weird, hostile, like like perverse and, and cruel vibe going on between the people in the group in the house and <laughs> I guess that's really the best way for me to describe what this movie is about. Because otherwise, I don't know. Like I said, having subtitles doesn't help. Because most of the dialogue is it's, it's like this pseudo deep philosophical or poetic um, drivel. Oft bin ich mir kaum bewusst, wo die helle Freude zückt durch die Schwere, so mich drückt wonniglich in meiner Brust. Apparently taken from a lot of literature. Oh, it's, uh, it all just goes in one ear and out the other for me. Like, I, I, I just don't process any of it. Anyway, often listed as uh, one of the most disturbing movies ever, this movie does indeed tend to disturb. There's, uh, there's actually so much going on that I often forget just how much shit goes down in this movie. And apparently some of the, the more extreme stuff was even cut out because of legal reasons. So yeah, this movie does not fuck around. Towards the end they, uh, they intercut one scene where they're raping a girl with a knife with another one where a girl is watching a videotape of those guys killing newborns. You know, just to give you an idea. And I could, you know, basically spend this whole video just listing all the vile and sadistic and disgusting stuff that we get to see. But I'm not gonna do that. In that sense, it's it's, it's really a bit of a uh, you have to see it for yourself type of deal. Ah, uh, yeah. I, uh, I I really have a bit of a love hate relationship with this movie. Hate because well, the biggest problem I have with this movie is the animal cruelty and the overly long running time, and the lack of a coherent plot, and the pseudo-deep dialogue. But mostly the animal cruelty, because, you know, just for that, this, this movie is really hard to justify. I won't show you any, and, you know, it, it might be great special effects and, and clever editing, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that the scene with the cat is real. And other scenes with, with smaller, you know, like insects and, and reptiles, they are definitely real. Are they amphibians? Anyway, not fucking cool. The love comes from the fact that this is indeed a movie that, that leaves me with a, a certain nauseated feeling that few other movies have. The just pure evilness of it all, you know, don't see that a lot to this degree. I mean, uh, so I guess uh, I, I gotta applaud him for that. As well as the, the whole visual aspect, Th this is definitely his best looking movie. Beautiful locations, great and detailed production design, and nice good looking cinematography. He even added a film grain over his already established look. That's very Kino. Also, the, the organ music I, I quite like. It really adds to the, to the whole dismal li like vibe and, and atmosphere. <laughs> What a movie. The best, or perhaps the, the, the simplest way to describe this movie is probably just as a, a surreal fever dream or like a nightmare. It's, it's just such an ugly movie, but at the same time it's, it's also kind of beautiful. It's uh, confusing. It's just, ah, I just hate the fact that there's all this animal cruelty in this movie. Because you know, like I said a couple of times before now, it's just that's, that's like instant, not cool point. It's, 
Apparently, the the whole shoot was was quite a uh, like an uncomfortable, intense, or simply just a, a horrible experience for for most people involved. And well, between all the the, the animal killings and and the, and the puking and pissing and and pooping, you know the the three P's of Bora. I I can imagine there was a uh, you know a certain vibe on set. So. When I heard about this uh, upcoming documentary called uh, Revisiting Melancholy the Engel, I got, you know, pretty excited. Mostly because, you know, the whole, like, the making of or just, like, the behind the scenes, like, all related to this movie, that's, you know, that sounded quite fascinating to me. So, the movie came out, I, I got it, and, uh, ah, it's quite disappointing. Basically, it's just for, you know, like, some 90 minutes or so, we're following around the filmmaker of the documentary, following around Marion Dora, while he visits, like, some old, like, filming locations of Melancholy der Engel, and, and reminisces over the production. It's not great. It's, it's definitely not the insight that I was hoping for. You know, it would have been so cool to get the, the perspective from some other people in, involved that, you know, that, that would have been interesting. But, um, oh well. Anyway, um... Yeah, that's uh, Melancholy der Engel. Check it out if uh, if you're in the mood for an uh, endurance test. Just, you, you know, one more time, just be warned about the, uh, the animal cruelty. So, next up, his next movie, Reise nach Achates. Is it Achates? Achates? Or a voyage to Achates? Ah, Achates? Ah, what, what is this, Achates? Well, apparently it's a reference to Agartha, Agartha, the fictional kingdom in a supposedly hollow earth. Ha! <laughs> yeah, right. But what does it? What does that mean? Well, um, let's see if we can uh, find out. Uh, I don't think it means anything, by the way. Interestingly, this movie is shot in just three days on location in Croatia. After a friend suggested to Dora to rent a boat and you know shoot a movie and. That's cool. I mean, isn't that how some of the best movies were made? No. We follow this couple of sadomasochists. They're on a uh, reise, but they don't get along all too well. Du bist geschmacklos. Ha! You, you should have seen Ghost and Frank in Devil's Documentar if you're, uh, you're talking about disgusting. Frank, by the way, isn't in any other Dora movies after Melancholy der Engel, since they had a bit of a falling out over specific scenes in that movie, if I remember that correctly. Uh, anyway, because it's once again all shot on digital video, the first part basically looks like someone's shitty vacation home video. But yeah, so they pick up this girl that the guy knows from somewhere, I guess, and then go on the boat. The guy is mostly being a dick to his partner, but eventually also starts acting this way towards the girl, and this escalates over the course of the movie. Which, I, I guess, his partner likes? It's a... Uh, <laughs> if, if anything, it, uh, it brings them closer together as a couple. How romantic. Like, when he's raping the other girl, she's all like, ah. Hashtag couple goals. Anyway, that's it. Towards the end, they get back on, on land again, where the girl tries to escape, but ends up in a Sergio Leone spaghetti western standoff. Which she loses, and then we get some pretty graphic stuff. It's, a, it's pretty messed up. Even the, the lady is like, no. And then it ends clocking in at a measly 74 minutes. But uh, it still feels very long because nothing happens. Or well, not a lot. The first half is really slow. We're just following the couple and the girl they picked up. And th the whole movie is intercut with these drawn out poetic scenes with voiceover. Gibt es einmal frei den Blick auf seinen Grund, den Morast. <laughs> and it's still barely feature length. This would have worked a lot better as a short, I'd say. It's also probably the least memorable for me out of all of his movies. Probably because it was, you know, kind of an unplanned movie. And sh sure, the, the story behind it is cool, like, hey, let's rent a boat and shoot a movie. But just because you can, doesn't mean you should. I do um, like the locations, it looks pretty nice. And towards the end it gets pretty intense, but really that's, that's about it. I, I do like the title, Reise nach Achates, or Voyage to Achates. 
however the hell you, you pronounce that. So, you know, it's, it's quite poetic. The movie itself, it's, 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 it's kind of funny that, you know, like, this is probably his most straightforward movie. You know, basically it's just a, a, a sadistic couple capturing a girl and, and torturing her. You know, like, just traditional straightforward storytelling. And then while, you know, while talking about uh, Melancholy the Engel, I was actually complaining about how that's like an incoherent, like, like not at all straightforward uh, storyline, or like movie in general. And now that we finally get it, it's still not good. Um, oh well. So, we have one more movie left, and um, let's see if we can go out with a bang. It's, um, Carcinoma, which is a type of cancer. Yeah, that's, sounds like another fun one, right? Let's see. So, no subtitles. Hooray. And what's with this ugly fun during the credits? But hey, look at this. At least Mario Andorra invested in a new camera. How about that? And I, I guess he decided to just throw his whole visual style out of the window together with his shitty DV camera, which is kind of a shame. And in a way, really makes his movie stand out. And I don't mean that per se for the better. Anyway, apparently based on an actual person and reconstructed with the use of the same locations and the actual people around that person playing themselves, I guess? Um, we follow this guy, Dorian. He's just living a normal life, having sex with his weird, shitty, bipolar girlfriend and with snakes there, until he has a bad poop and goes to the hospital. Probably something to do with cancer. You know, because of the title? And this is an intense hospital if I've ever seen one. We get to see a bunch of rotten.com type shit and of course the colonoscopy in full detail. There's actually a lot of shit in this movie. As in, you, you know, like poop. In general in, in Dora's movies, but here I was like, ugh. And not because it's like, ooh, disturbing. It's just, I don't really care for seeing people poop. Although, this one scene, gotta give him that, is pretty impressive. <laughs> oh, if, if that's real, this video is definitely gonna get demonetized, if it wasn't already a million times during Debris' documenta. Anyway, so he has cancer, and then over the course of the movie, he grows this weird relationship, or well, rather obsession, with his disease and, and wounds, all the while deciding not to get any medical help or treatment. And he visits church a bunch. And, you know, I, I thought I was doing pretty well following a movie without subtitles. Until, seemingly out of the blue, he's at his buddy's gay BDSM dungeon party. And that's when I realized, like, yeah, I, <laughs> I might actually be missing some parts here. Towards the end of the movie, he moves in with his mom, who starts to take care of him. Because, you know, moms are the best. Wait, is, is that David Hess again? And... <laughs> I don't know. This whole part I thought was weirdly, oddly fascinating. Like, it's, it's, it's all quite intense, but at the same time, somewhat unintentionally funny. Like here, with the, with the misplaced music and over-the-top sound design. Uh, oh boy. In the end, I'm not quite sure how to feel about this one. It's still a, a somewhat nauseating movie, but I feel like it was missing that, you know, punch that most of his previous movies have. Even though I was actually, like, really dreading watching this one quite a bit, since, you know, cancer is not a lot of fun. Also, what is up with the smoke in this movie? There's so much smoke. It's like smoke, smoke, smoke. Really, like, Almost every other scene, there's smoke. What does it mean? Maybe nothing. So yeah, that was um, 2014, and um, to date his latest feature length movie. He reportedly directed a segment for The Profane Exhibit, an anthology movie featuring a bunch of directors, but nobody seems to know what ever happened to this project. Besides that, he directed about a million shorts, ranging from Mondo type shit to fake snuff to borderline pornography, all of which really isn't all that interesting to cover. Which brings us to the end of this video. The main reason I wanted to talk about uh, Dora and, and his movies is mostly because 
He's just such a polarizing filmmaker. You know, you have some people out there calling him a, a, a true artist that finds beauty in death and decay. Well, on the other end, you have a bunch of people, probably the majority, calling him a uh, pretentious sicko. And one more time, the killing of animals suck. And I, I really hate that he did so for his movies, or, you know, even if it's just for one movie. Because, uh, you know, it, it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable with praising his work, or, you know, just perhaps like elements of his work. It makes me somewhat uncomfortable with the fact that I own all of his movies on DVD. And I know that's super hypocritical of me to say, because I've said before in, in like many times in, in, in my videos here on my channel that Cannibal Holocaust is one of my favorite movies. But, you know, that whole discussion is probably material for another video for another time. So, if we can just set it aside and ignore for a second the animal cruelty, I do honestly think he's an, uh, an interesting filmmaker, artist. Just the fact that he, he works so many different jobs on his movies, you know, from, from writing and directing to uh, shooting, like filming and editing, to production design and, and like audio mixing or like sometimes even music, I, I find that very admirable. And, and it definitely makes his movies quite personal. Especially in combination with, you know, like the, the consistency of, of themes that we see throughout his uh, filmography. It's, um, <laughs> it's definitely not um, traditional entertainment. I don't even think it's, it's entertainment at all. I mean, I know it's, it's not intended to be entertaining. And even though in the end I don't even really like any of his movies, I did see them all some like twice. I did spend a whole bunch of time working on this video and now I'm sitting here you know like sort of like spreading the word word of his work. So uh, I don't know it must have done something right. Anyway that's uh, my take. How about you guys? Um, How much uh, do you guys hate Marion Dora? Or is there like actual some some genuine fans out there? I'd, um, I'd love to hear your opinion. That's really all for uh, today's video. I'd just like to say really quick, um, thanks for all the really positive reactions I got on my previous video. You know, the one where I was announcing that I messed up and then I'm busy and then I never make videos and then blah. It's just really nice to, to, to see and hear that there's a bunch of people out there that, you know, like they say, like, we don't really care. Just post videos whenever you can. We'll check them out. And this will actually be the last video um, for this year. But I'm, um, don't pin me down on this. I am sincerely going to try and like be more like active with, with new videos in, in new year 2019. So um, that's uh, as good as any time to stop this video. I'll see you guys in the next year. Cheers. Have a good one. And a, have a nice day.